This is the ignition control panel for a Volvo MD21A. It might be similar to your boat, however, on a Mayflower 48 called Jamplander in Honolulu. Now, typically, when we start our engine, grab the key, we go all the way over, all the way over to get the preheaters to work for about 15 seconds. Right now, this light should be lit. And we count about 10 seconds, 12 seconds, whatever. And the preheaters are working. So go all the way over. And the engine starts. And as you can see, the oil pressure light came on. Now, if you're lucky, that's how it works. On uh, Japlander, what we did is we put a, a switch here which drives an electric fuel pump. And uh, I'll tell you the reason for that later. But right now the engine started. It hasn't been started for a number of days, so it just took a little longer than normal. But let's say you come to your boat and you try to do this and it doesn't start right away. And you have some symptoms here that will tell you what's wrong. We'll show you what those are in a second. This is the exhaust uh, coming out of the Mayflower 48. And uh, you might wonder how much water is supposed to be coming out. And the answer is five gallons a minute. So how do you find out if there's five gallons a minute coming out of the exhaust? Because if it's not five gallons a minute, now you've got a heating problem for your engine. So the first one thing you can do is put a bucket there, go out in the dinghy, and fill the bucket up, a five gallon bucket, and see if it takes a minute. Anyway, uh, we'll get on to what the problems could be. Okay, when well, your engine is now running, the uh, MD21A on Yamplander is a little different than most boats uh, that have the MD21A installed. Uh, what we do is uh, we first turn off the key. Oh, the ignition panel died, and that's what's supposed to happen. But notice that the engine is still running. And although the engine is still running, uh, it is uh, pumping all of the uh, salt water out of the exhaust system. So after it runs for about 15 seconds, or about this amount of time, uh, then we'll shut the engine down by pulling the shutdown lever. That uh, eliminates fuel uh, coming in, diesel fuel going into the engine. Of course, that's what. Uh, what kills the engine is it's not getting any fuel. So we'll tell you why and how we were able to do all of that. Now if your ignition power does not, uh, a panel does not light up, which means it's getting no uh, 12 volts DC to the panel, probably the problem is this kind of a device that Volvo put in, and it's a fuse block. And what the fuse block does is it uh, blows a fuse if you uh, run your preheaters too long or and somehow there's too much current being drawn by the ignition system. This is uh, one of the first things you want to replace on your uh, engine. Uh, what we did was uh, because if that fuse blows and your panel is dead you've got to get continuity again or some kind of uh, reset system in, uh, in place so that the ignition can get 12 volts. Now what we did was we replace this with a new device, relatively new to us. It's a uh, resettable a fuse block, and this one happens to be a 15 amps. The engine wants 20, but we put in a 15 amp, and that works fine. So we don't have that uh, dead power in the ignition uh, panel because of this fuse block. If it blows, it resets itself. The other, next to it, <laughs> is another Volvo invention that uh, uh, we haven't figured out how to get rid of. But these connectors, as you can see, just slide on. They're terrible uh, because they carry a lot, of t a lot of current and you have to maintain them. And here's what happens if the, those connections uh, don't get power. Uh, what will happen is corrosion sets in and now your preheaters for your injectors are not going to be preheated. So you end up cranking your engine for 15, 20, 30, 40 seconds. 
So the purpose of the, this is a very important piece in the engine because it does the preheaters. If you've got a preheating um, engine, uh, some engines are like that. MD21A certainly is. But uh, if you need preheaters for your injectors, take a look at this block and make sure that you know that if it's not getting continuity, your glow plugs aren't going to get any juice. Now we made another uh, change uh, in Jamplander is we put in a uh, oil pressure gauge and we put it in right here and that measures oil pressure uh, and gets a, gives you an additional piece of information in case the oil light goes out on the panel which can happen but uh, if you're looking at an actual pressure gauge you can use that to find out if in fact you do have oil pressure. Now if you look down here you'll see something's missing. There are two connections down here and uh, this is one of them that's in and that's out and that's actually oil coming through a oil preheater and, or fil uh, <laughs> uh, it, it cools the oil, oil cooler and um, what we did is uh, in that place was an oil cooler and an oil filter combination which was made it very difficult to um, uh, change oil on this engine so we replaced that with a uh, oil cooler which is right there and we took the output of that and we put in a uh, oil filter which is up here easy access uh, from the engine uh, there's the uh, oil pressure light and when the engine is running uh, that uh, oil pressure light, oil pressure gauge, and when that uh, when the engine is running, of course, you'll read pressure uh, there. The other change that we made, uh, and uh, we think it's an important change for us anyway, is if you look uh, down here, and it's difficult to see it, is the let me get a light in here, maybe. Well, I can't get a light in there; it's too dark. Uh, but I can tell you, down there is the water pump. What we did was uh, we eliminated the water pump and put in an electric pump. And uh, this is the electric pump right here. And why would you ever put on an electric water pump, which is a good question that people would, uh, would ask. But that's a five-gallon uh, electric water pump DC. And here's the reason for putting it in. And there's a fuse box for it right there. Actually, it's fusible with another one of those handy-dandy uh, fuse, resettable fuses. Now, the uh, input to the uh, um, electric uh, fuel, uh, electric water pump, uh, the input comes from the water strainer, which is over there. It comes in here and actually replaces the mechanical water pump. Now, why would you do that? Well, once one, if if you've ever been out to sea and you had to change a um, an impeller on a mechanical pump on one of these engines or any engine, you're in for a, 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 an upset stomach. So there are other advantages. Uh, earlier, we showed you uh, us turning off uh, the ignition. Well, when we turn off the ignition. Uh, or the we, we turned off the electric pump and we turned that off by turning off uh, the ignition. Now the, the engine is still running and while it's running and it's not getting water it's pumping out the water that's already in the system and this is a, a good thing because you're keeping your engine uh, dry of uh, salt water. The other advantage of this uh, having one of these installed, the electric pump installed, is you can actually disconnect it and by disconnecting it, you can take the outlet and put it in a five-gallon bucket. And by putting it in a five-gallon bucket, you can tell what the output of that uh, water pump is. So one of two things is going to happen. If it's less than five gallons, the pump is bad. If it's less than five gallons, uh, your through hull or your water strainer, salt water strainer, is clogged. Now, if you are getting uh, five gallons uh, into the bucket from this pump, well, now you know that the problem is in the engine. And the problem is probably, it could be in the, um, 
the heat transfer device here. And uh, one of the things could, that could happen there is it could be clogged up with, uh, uh, with salt. Uh, so you'd have to pull the heat exchanger. And pulling the heat exchanger is easy on this boat. You, you just, uh, on this engine, you just uh, pull off the bolts here on the top and this whole section uh, slides out and you clean it out. The other important uh, aspect of, of these modifications is they're all designed to make life easier for you because these engines were designed uh, without cruising in mind. One of the first things, if you have one of these engines and you don't have an electric fuel pump, you want to replace that mechanical pump and the mechanical pump is down here. Uh, and can you imagine yourself getting down there, you've run out of fuel and now you have to uh, get down there and use that mechanical plunger and move it up and down to get fuel to come all the way over to this side of the engine to the injector pump. Well, uh, not, a, not a happy camper again if you're out to sea and you're trying to do that. So the solution is to put in an electric fuel pump. Now an, another advantage of an electric fuel pump is that you don't have to have the engine running to transfer or clean fuel from one tank to the other. That's a major advantage if you think you've got a contamination problem. Uh, a light is in the way here, but let me sh show you one of the best fuel cleaners. Now for years we used uh, Raycor cleaners to uh, to clean the fuel on uh, Jamplander, but uh, let me tell you, that's not the way to go. Uh, this is the way to go. It's called uh, PetroPure. It's, you can see it's a huge unit. And since we installed that, we never had a fuel problem. Uh, so that polishes all our fuel. Uh, we don't use the Raycors anymore. We have bypasses in case it's an emergency, but that never occurred. The only other filter you have to be careful of or be concerned about, it's very rare that you have to replace this if you keep your full fuel clean. And that, that's this one here. And that's the engine pre-filter. Uh, believe it or not, it looks terrible, but we just replaced it just a few months ago because it developed a pinhole leak. So if you find oil in your bilge, that's the puppy you want to look at, is that small pre, uh, that pre uh, oil filter because sometimes they do develop that pinhole leak. Well, those are our tips on um, some troubleshooting uh, ideas of a Volvo MD21A that's uh, found on on some Mayflower 48s. What's great about a Mayflower is you have three hatch access, one on that side, one uh, on the starboard side, and one forward, which makes it a lot easier to deal with. Also, some of these yachts have generator compartments. I'll show you ours in a moment. Uh, just above the uh, generator compartment on uh, most May Mayflowers is a generator compartment just above the engine compartment. And uh, what we did was we put in a small NTEC, which is very light, 184 pounds, but produces enough power for refrigeration and charging batteries. Uh, some boats have big generators. We found it wasn't necessary. So uh, access is the key. Uh, right here you have access to the... Uh, uh, impella, wham wham, four screws, new impella. Uh, this is for manual start if you need it. Uh, we've never needed it, but we've tried it and it does work. Over here on the right is a uh, fuel filter, or a Raycor, and uh, here's check the oil here, and a fuel filter. And that, that is for that puppy and it produces enough uh, power for the boat. Now, unfortunately, it makes a lot of noise. So it's a one lunger and it only produce, eats about uh, one quart of diesel fuel an hour. That's just dripping it, a quart an hour. So uh, you don't have to worry about putting in a lot of, uh, of f f fuel in, uh, in this little generator. And it's uh, been a great reliable uh, uh, unit. Another thing we added was an Ariel uh, shaft brake, and this is a hydraulic unit. It's been flawless for 30 years, never fails, and it's designed to take hydraulic pressure from the... It takes that uh, engine uh, output of hydraulic pressure, and it locks that uh, shaft brake with a pair of calipers, which you saw from the other side, 
and uh, locks the shaft so when you go sailing, I don't know if you can see the shaft down there, it's difficult, but uh, it locks the shaft so when you're sailing you don't have that prop spinning and that's very important to save wear and tear on the stuffing box. So, uh, also right here is our fuel pump, electric fuel pump. Easy to get to, that's the way to do it. Don't stick it somewhere where you can't find it. We also put transfer valves up here for the uh, for the oil uh, filtration system. So, and last but not least, our battery charger is here, which is a good place to put it. And it's just above a device that we put in called a uh, isolation transformer. And they're important because they separate the dock power from the boat. Also, if you're in countries, you're going from countries from 220 um, to 115 volts, 50 to 60 cycles. This is a great unit to have because you can use, if you're a U.S. boat, you can use 220 power from a foreign uh, foreign power supply. So they're, they're good and also they reduce uh, electrolysis on the boat because you're never connected to the dock. So the, this is Richard Johnson uh, on the vessel Jamplander. We hope these tips and tricks might help you to make your Mayflower 48 a a better boat. Now uh, these are great yachts of course and uh, some of these modifications may or may not work for your situation because all boats and people are different and uh, but we hope they're they're useful. Some of the ideas were useful particularly where we started which is uh, the control panel. You can tell a lot by what's going on in your engine by looking at this control panel. For example if you turn on the key and you see no movement at all then you know that uh, uh, getting back to the fundamentals, you have to go down to the engine and check, uh, check that little uh, fuse block. Now, if you have a meter handy, you can pull the panel out, take the screws off, and check the red wire. It's on, on this side of the panel in the back, and if there's no 12 volts there, uh, then you know that your problem is below in that fuse block. So, uh, back to the fundamentals. This is Richard Johnson in Honolulu, Hawaii, and we hope you had a great day today. Aloha.